everybody. Stand and help me welcome Travis Green, everybody. Done so much for me, I cannot tell it all. If I had ten thousand tongues, it still wouldn't be enough. You have to practice who you want to be. You know, you don't wake up one morning uh, and you're suddenly uh, who you think you want to be. You have to uh, put some energy into it. So if you want to be an honest person, you have to be an honest person every day, even starting at three and four and five, right? If you're going to be a hard worker, hard work doesn't just appear. You have to practice hard work. Uh, you have to practice effort. Um, you know, and, and I also encourage them uh, and, and try to help them understand that good things don't come easy. You know, with that effort, you know, uh, that's where you grow. That's where growth is. Some of the best times in my life when I've grown, it's when I've done something hard, uh, when I've overcome a fear. You don't realize that when you're doing it, but when you come out on the other side, you realize, wow, I've really uh, stepped up. This is what I tell my daughters every day. Do not be afraid to fail because that oftentimes is the thing that keeps us as women and girls back because we think we have to be right. We think we have to be perfect. We think that we can't stumble. Um, and the only way you succeed in life, the only way you learn is by failing. It's not the failure, it's what you do after you fail, you know? Do you let it eat you up? Do you quit? Do you give up? Or do you let it bolster you? Does it serve as, as the challenge in your mind to do more, to take some risks, to step outside of your comfort zone? Are you gonna throw up your hands and say that progress will never come? Are you gonna get angry and lash out? Are you gonna turn inward? and just give in to despair and frustration? Or are you gonna take a deep breath, straighten your shoulders, lift up your head, and do what Barack Obama has always done? As he says, when they go low, I go high. That's the choice Barack and I have made. That's what has kept us sane over the years. We simply do not allow space in our hearts minds or souls for darkness. Instead, we choose faith, faith in ourselves, in the power of hard work, faith in our God, whose overwhelming love sustains us every single day. That's what we choose. We choose love, our love for our children, our commitment to leaving them a better world, our, our love for our country, which has given us so many blessings and advantages. Our love for our fellow citizens, parents working hard to support their kids, men and women in uniform who risk everything to keep us safe. Young people from the toughest backgrounds who never stop believing in their dreams. Young people like so many of you 
that's what we choose. And we choose excellence. We choose to tune out all the noise and strive for excellence in everything we do. No cutting corners, no taking shortcuts, no whining. We give 120% every single time because excellence, excellence is the most powerful answer you can give to the doubters and the haters. It's also the most powerful thing you can do for yourself. See, because the process of striving and struggling and pushing yourself to new heights, see, that's how you develop your God-given talents. That's how you make yourself stronger and smarter and more able to make a difference for others. If I was gonna protect them, I had to number one, protect myself and protect my time. So, I knew going into this role that I didn't want to waste any time, that any time I spent away from my kids, and I, I actually took this on even before I became First Lady, even as a lawyer, as a vice president at a hospital, one of the things I realized is that if you do not take control over your time and your life, other people will gobble it up. If you don't prioritize yourself, you constantly start falling lower and lower on your list, your kids fall lower and lower on your list. So by the time you got here, you knew how to do that. I knew how to do that. Read, write, read, read. If the president were here, one of his greatest strengths is reading. That's one of the reasons why he's a good communicator, why he's such a good writer. He's a voracious reader. So we're trying to get our girls, no matter what, to just be, to love reading and to challenge themselves with what they read, not just read the gossip books, but to uh, uh, push themselves beyond and do things that maybe they wouldn't do. So I would encourage you all to, to read, 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 just keep reading. And writing is another skill, it's practice, it's practice. The more you write, the better you get drafts. Uh, our kids are learning, the first draft means nothing. You're gonna do seven, 10 drafts. That's writing, it's not failure. It's not, not the teacher not liking you because it's all marked up in red. When you get to be a good writer, you mark your own stuff in red and you rewrite and you rewrite and you rewrite. That's what writing is. Um, and if you come out with those skills and then you're confident and you can articulate and you can stand up straight and look anybody in the eye and say, this is who I am, it's a pleasure to meet you. And that's one of the things we try to do with our mentoring program with young girls. My message to them is if you can walk into the White House and meet the First Lady and say, my name is, how are you, and look me in the eye, then there's nothing you can't do. That's why it's important. If you guys walked here, are sitting here in front of all these people, standing tall, asking questions, using your voice, you have to practice that. These arenas just show up again and again, and then you just get used to it. The nerves go away, and you start relaxing into your own abilities. But it's practice. Be supportive of each other. I mean, I, I just can't say this enough. We have to be our best friends, each other. That means we cannot be catty. We cannot compete and see one person's failure as our success. We can all rise together, okay? We can all win. And, and we're sometimes taught in our societies that we have to compete and we have to hold each other back in order for one of us to succeed. That is not true. We need each other. We as women, we as minorities sort of take for, uh, we underestimate in ourselves and that is, I, I'm pretty smart. Yeah, I work pretty hard. Um, I'm, I'm good at what I do. I, I have really good instincts. I have great ideas and I can execute. And I say that out loud because we as women don't like pat ourselves on the back. For our, We're always sort of deferring. Yes. You know, we, we, we cede our power so easily. And I want young girls out there to know, look. <laughs> Live out loud. Live out loud and understand that what's in your brain is, is really useful. Do not hide it. Don't, don't dumb it down. Don't apologize for it. Just put it on the table and let people deal with it. 
mm -hmm. um, because w we silence ourselves. I was the vice president of community outreach for the University of Chicago Hospital. And I got that job because I didn't compromise. Um, because before uh, getting working at that job, I was working as an associate dean. I had had Malia. Barack was in the U.S. Senate, so I was basically, you know, mothering part time on my own. Having I had a full time job, so I tried part time. I've talked about this before. I tried part time because I thought I have to figure this out. I have to be able to pick the kids up. I've got to be able to do all this. So. Try part-time. So only thing I found out from part-time was that you just get paid part-time. <laughs> <laughs> because I was still doing a full-time job. I was just cramming it all into the few hours that I was there and driving myself crazy. So I had vowed that if I continued to work, that I would never settle for part-time. I knew what my time and energy was worth. So when I went into that, the president's office to interview for that job, I thought, I have a little baby, I don't have babysitting, so here we go. We're all gonna go in to see the president because <laughs> this is who I am. Yeah. And I said, and if I take this job, I need flexibility and I need full pay. So if you want me to leave my baby and my kids, then you're gonna have to pay me because I'm gonna do the job. That was never a question, you know, I could deliver. But I wasn't, I knew then I wasn't going to sell myself short. I don't ever view it as bravery. Yeah. You didn't think that was brave saying, look, right. I'm going to be paid full I, time? Right. I, I, just, I just viewed it as, I'm, I'm not going to be taken advantage of. You know, I just, I am just not going to keep selling you myself. You knew your value. value. That's absolutely You knew your value. Right. When you are struggling and you start thinking about giving up, I want you to remember something that my husband and I have talked about since we first started this journey nearly a decade ago. Something that has carried us through every moment in this White House and every moment of our lives. And that is the power of hope. The belief that something better is always possible if you're willing to work for it and fight for it. It is our fundamental belief in the power of hope that has allowed us to rise above the voices of doubt and division, of anger and fear that we have faced in our own lives and in the life of this country. Our hope that if we work hard enough and believe in ourselves, then we can be whatever we dream, regardless of the limitations that others may place on us. The hope that when people see us for who we truly are, maybe, just maybe. The biggest mistake is you think you have time. Time is free, but it's priceless. You can't own it, but you can use it. You can't keep it, but you can spend it. And once it's lost, you can never get it back. The average person lives 78 years. We spend 28.3 years of our life sleeping. That's almost a third of our life, but 30% of us struggle to sleep well. We spend 10.5 years of our life working, but over 50% of us want to leave our current jobs. Time is more valuable than money. You can get more money, but you can never get more time. We spend nine years on TV and social media. We spend six years doing chores. We spend four years eating and drinking. We spend three and a half years in education. We spend two and a half years grooming. We spend two and a half years shopping. We spend one and a half years in childcare and we spend 1.3 years commuting. That leaves us with nine years. How will we spend that time? Steve Jobs said your time is limited so don't waste it living someone else's life. So there's good news and there's bad news. The bad news is time flies, the good news is you're the pilot. Imagine you wake up every day with $86,400 in your bank account and at the end of the night it's all gone whether you spent it or not. And then the next day you get another $86,400. What would we do with it? 
Every day, 86,400 seconds are deposited into your life account. At the end of the day, once they're all used up, you get a new 86,400 seconds. We would never waste it if it was money, so why do we waste it when it comes to time? Those seconds are so much more powerful than dollars because you can always make more dollars, you can't always make more time. To realize the value of one year, ask a student who failed a grade. To realize the value of one month, ask a mother who lost her child in the final month. To realize the value of one week, ask the editor of an online magazine. To realize the value of one hour, ask the couple who's in a long distance relationship. To realize the value of one minute, ask the person who just missed a bus, train or plane. To realize the value of one second, ask the person who just missed an accident. And to realize the value of a millisecond, ask the person who just came second at the Olympics. We think that it's people wasting our time, but it's really us giving them the permission to do that. And in reality, these two people live inside us. Don't let someone be a priority when all you are to them is an option. Some of us lose the people most important to us because we don't value their time. Some of us don't recognize how important someone is to us until they're gone. Inside all of us are two voices. One voice that wants to uplift, one voice that wants us to expand, one voice that wants us to grow. And then there's the other voice, the voice that holds us back the voice that makes us lazy, the voice that makes us complacent, the voice that restricts us from our potential. Every day from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to sleep, inside of us there's this battle between the two voices. And guess which one wins? The one that we listen to the most, the one that we feed, the one that we amplify. It is our choice of how we use our time. Life and time are the best two teachers. Life teaches us to make good use of time and time teaches us the value of life. And as William Shakespeare said, time is very slow for those who want, very fast for those who are scared, very long for those who are sad, very short for those who celebrate. But for those who love, time is eternal.